Hey everybody, this is Jake with Trend Spider. Just wanted to do a strategy guide post on the relationship between the Williams percent range and the RSI. So we've got the Williams percent range here shown by the green line. We've got the the blue RSI shown here um, below. So what we have is essentially just a chart of the S&P 500. But what we want to look at here is essentially how are these momentum oscillators related and the one way that you can use this in your kind of best interest is by looking at the relationship between the two and looking at generally when the percent range starts to break down into oversold areas and the the um, RSI is not oversold yet in theory that means that momentum is really starting to take a downturn. Um, so for example here, the percent range started to become oversold here, right, um, on February 2nd. However, the RSI here was still, was still not oversold. So notice how the price continued to move down until both of these areas were oversold, and then also notice how here the price moved down from, from February 5th down to February 9th, notice it hit a lower low here, but the percent range was at a higher higher low. So we have divergence both on here and on the RSI, and then that was our confirmation of the bottom and a big move up. So same thing here, we had the percent range kind of getting oversold at this point here on the 22nd of March, and we can see that right here. But notice how the RSI was not oversold yet. And so notice how we continued to move down, and then once the RSI was showing divergence, which is essentially when the price was here, and then the open was here, so we're downward sloping here, but we're upward sloping on the RSI and the percent range. So that is also the confirmation bottom. So essentially a way to use this is to first look at the percent range, look where the bottom is, and then after that, compare that to the RSI. So in this case, there was a couple times where the percent range really did not show us the true bottom here. Um, so in this case, we could go and just change that to a lower indicator to make it more sensitive. So let's move it to, let's say, 10. As we can see, as we move the indicator to 10, the input, we can see that this almost catches the lows a lot better. So um, notice here, right when we bottomed out here on the percent range this was a bottom now notice that the RSI did not bottom out here so what we did what we did here was we kinda we correlated the the SMA with the oversold conditions on the percent range so another way to kinda use the percent range is to compare where the oversold conditions are on the percent range versus the SMA. So in this case, notice here again, we closed right on the SMA a little below it, and notice how the percent range was oversold. We immediately bounced after that, so even though the percent range was showing us that we we're oversold, the RSI was not. So generally when the RSI is not oversold, that either means one, we're nearing a bottom, or two, things are really gonna start moving down. So in this case, this was a case of things really started to move down, but in these cases up here, we were already in a pretty solid uptrend, and the SMA actually acted as the area that coincided with oversold levels on the percent range. So here, we, uh, we broke down through the SMA, but we held the trend line. So the trend line support coincided with the oversold area on the Williams percent range. Here again, the price hit the SMA here and the percent range. So the 10 isn't necessarily going to tell us it. So you know, maybe we have to make, even make it a little more sensitive. Maybe we make it eight. Now notice when we do this, sometimes this is going to false signal. So, you know, notice here, the percent range was oversold way up here and we continued down. So sometimes using a more sensitive percent range will actually help you find some of these bottoms or an idea of when the price is really gonna start dropping lower. So in this case, the Williams percent range eight so that means that it's essentially looking at the last eight days in the uh, formula and so in this case we can see almost every single time the percent range became oversold we had a bounce so here was another oversold area a strong bounce notice it coincided perfectly with the SMA but notice that the RSI was not oversold so using these two in conjunction can really help 
The percent range is always going to signal first because it's a more sensitive indicator, and generally the RSI is going to signal second. So, um, you know, definitely look for these divergences. We will be doing another divergence type blog this week, but this is generally how you can use these together and also using the um, the trend lines and the SMA or any moving average to also kind of correlate with the lower indicator action as well. So right now we've got an ascending wedge. Um, you know, if we if we break out of this wedge, that could be very strong. And really, we would want to see um, the RSI to continue up. Now, notice here as well when the RSI became overbought around 70. This generally was an area that the price pulled back. So you can also use the RSI for topping areas as well. So, um, you know, anytime we've been at this, this general kind of 70 area, we have had a pullback. Um, now, now we do have room to move up. So does this mean that the market's going to continue up? Um, we'll have to see. But this is definitely an example of using a... Um, a group of indicators and upper, lower and upper rather than just using one or two, um, which doesn't give you the full picture. Hope this helped and um, you can always uh, ask us any questions through our email and uh, we will get back to you as soon as we can. Thanks so much and uh, we will have more of these videos coming soon.